Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now today I want to talk about something that's very important for anybody getting started in acrylic painting and that is how can you avoid some of the mistakes that beginners end up making when they pick up a paintbrush and some acrylic paints for the first time. And none of these are really incredibly hard to get past, but it's good to know about these things so you can do it the right way. Let's take a look at number one. When working with acrylic paints, they come in a whole bunch of different types and sizes and blends and methodologies and, you know, lots of companies pushing acrylic paint out the door. And that's great, but the challenge that you run into is inconsistencies in your paint. For example, if I were to take some of this uh, Basics Blue here and put it into my palette dish, you can see it comes in very, very thick. Now, that's not a terrible thing necessarily. Uh, it depends on what we're going to do with this, this green color which is also coming in is incredibly, incredibly thick. And the problem with using this very thick paint is that when I'm painting with it, uh, the paint is already very globby and very thick. And it's gonna vary, of course, different depending on the brand of paint that we use. So this means if I come into my piece of scrap paper here and I start putting paint down, I'm gonna have a lot of a heavier texture, which may be the desire you're looking for. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the camera. But this is, has some relief to it. The paint is actually sticking up off the paper a little bit. And it could be a really interesting effect if that's what you want. But if you're looking for something that's very smooth. So for a lot of beginning painters, the idea is how can I take this thick paint and make it thinner, make it easier to spread around and make it a smoother process. And the answer is varied. But one of the most simple things that we can do is water. Yeah, I can just take a little bit of water here. And uh, in this case, I'm going to put it into a ramekin. Just a tiny little drop here for what we're doing. And then if I take my thick paint, like this blue paint, and stir it into the water, guess what's going to happen? Yes, it's going to become thinner because that's the nature of diluting things with water. This is not new to you. But the thing that's interesting about working with this, let me just make sure I get this mixed up nicely, is that now it's a very different type of effect. It's almost like a watercolor effect with the paint that's, that's happening. Now, we can work with this if we need to, and if that's the desired effect we want. I will caution you against one thing, however, and that is if you're using water to dilute your acrylic paints, too much water is going to get to a point where you're going to break down the binder for the paint. And the binder is basically the thing that sticks the paint together. And so if you want something that you're going to paint on a, a, a wall or on a palette or anything you're using, paper, it could be canvas, and you want it to stick around for a while, Water is not the best solution from a thinning standpoint because, again, when the binder gets broken down, it might leave some pigment behind, but it's not going to stick to that surface very well. And, of course, as you can see, it's also now incredibly thin and almost more like a wash than it is like paint. Of course, you could probably dab a, a little bit of fresh paint in that to, to thicken up. But the, the challenge here is that water, well, it can be very useful, and a couple of drops of water can really save you from time to time. The other thing you want to be able to think about is how can you make sure that the binder doesn't break down so it will stick to the paper or whatever you're working. And the answer is to use a medium. Now, basically a medium here, I have a, a matte fluid medium. It comes in different uh, types. You can have ultra matte, you can have glossy, you can have semi-gloss. This is really just an acrylic paint that has no pigment in it. And as a result, it allows us to come in here and thin the paint down without, frankly, watering it down. So if I were to come in here, let me grab another ramekin. I'll put a few drops in here. And again, I don't need too much for what I'm doing today. But now let me go and grab some of my thick paint again. And we'll get that into, uh, into here. You'll start to notice, I don't know if you, again, if you can see this in the ramekin. Uh, one of the things that working with the medium doesn't do uh, as much is it doesn't break down the pigment. It doesn't take you away from the color that you want. And uh, it just allows you to really thin that color out. Now, again, we might be able to put a few more drops in here. I'll do that just to, just to make this a little thinner. There we go. That'll work. But the point simply is, again, if you're working with this and you want to be able to have something that's kind of a smoother, wetter paint, which is what this is going to do, it's going to allow you to have that opportunity. Now, if I come in here and uh, put this paint on my paper here, I want you to notice the difference. First of all, it is a creamier experience. We're getting better coverage. It's not quite the same as what is above it where this is very much a wash, almost like a watercolor wash. And instead we're putting down a much smoother and frankly easier to use. You can just feel the difference when you're painting. It's, it's like butter, right? It's a smoother, smoother experience. 
and it's just going to make it a lot easier to get the coverage you want and consistent coverage and you know you can work it in different ways All right but anyway basic takeaway is simply this water a few drops once in a while not a bad thing but if you really want to dilute your paint using a medium of some sort and i'll put the link in the description below as to where to find these uh, these different things but this will really help you up your game and make sure that you can get away from globby blobby paints and smooth it out accordingly now another challenge for beginning painters is that they often underestimate how quickly acrylic paint can dry. Now if we're working with oil paints, you, you have days. You have days to make sure that you can smooth things together. But when you're working with acrylics, you really have to plan ahead about how you're going to layer things, which colors you're going to use, and especially if you're trying to blend colors together, you have to make sure that you get things done while things are still wet. And again, let me just give you an example of how we might do this. I'm going to put a little bit of this yellow orange onto my piece of paper here and let's uh, let's get that started with just kind of a spreading that out a little bit some X patterns here there we go now this is again a very thick paint and because it's a very thick paint it generally means there's not all that much moisture in it and if I were to come in here and say all right let me uh, let me do a blend between this and some green let's say and if I'm uh, you know taking my time because I'm chatting with some friends on YouTube or whatever the heck's going on it's very possible by the time I get to where that green is ready to be blended in with the orange that it's already too late. And actually, if I take my finger and kind of tap it in here, it's already becoming kind of tacky. It's, it's really almost too late at this point. What has it been, 30 seconds? I mean, it's not a lot of time here. So if I come in here and try to do the same thing with this color and say, okay, I want to find a way to blend them together, what I'm going to see here is that the orange is actually not really blendable anymore. Uh, the green is painting over the orange, and I can kind of come in here and try to, uh, to mix those colors, but you know what? There's no mixing happening. And this is a huge challenge, again, when we're dealing with any kind of globby paint or heavy-duty paint, is that I have to work pretty quickly. Now, one of the other things I'll mention is a lot of what your, your window of opportunity is going to be based upon is what your relative humidity is in the air where you currently are. Now, right now, when I'm doing this, it's a pretty dry day, and as a result, not a lot of humidity, so the moisture has a tendency to leave the paint very quickly. And as a result, I might come up with a cool effect, but what, if what I was looking for was a pure, perfect blend here, then guess what? Not so much. So the challenge here, again, is finding a way to keep your paints wetter longer. Now again, goes back to our friend, liquid medium can really help out here as well. Now it's probably a little too late to do anything with this, but if I were to drop a little bit of this in my painting area, let's see if we can kind of wet things up a little bit. Maybe a little bit if we kind of dig in there, we'll pull that orange. It's not going to be a beautiful blend regardless because uh, green and orange are not exactly known for being uh, the most complementary of colors. But the point simply is that by using a medium, we can do that. There are also paint extenders, and I'll, again, I'll put a description down below as to where you can find these that allow you to add them to your acrylic paint so they dry more slowly, so it gives you more time to work on. So if you have a big bunch of, you're working on a big canvas and you have big areas you need to get with and you want to make sure you have some good blends, it may be nice to prolong the drying of the paint a few more minutes just to give you that window of opportunity. All right, so that is our second point. Just planning ahead to make sure that your paint is not going to dry too quickly. Now our third worst mistake is that sometimes as painters we can become impatient or maybe excited. I'm just moving on things to do and the problem isn't that our paint dried too quickly, it's that it hasn't dried fast enough. And what ends up happening is you're working on a piece and you've got some wet areas and hmm, I want to get some more stuff in there and again Maybe I don't want to blend my paints. Maybe I want to take this blue color and I want to be able to put it over my green color. Well, guess what? I can't do that. The green is still wet and it's going to start to automatically blend. So I'm not going to have that blue line that appears on top of the green or whatever I'm doing. And this is a very important consideration because, again, the desired effect and outlook that I want is not what I got. So how do we do that? Well, a couple things just to think about. A uh, couple things. We have blending problems. Another challenge for a lot of artists, and, and I've done this uh, oh, like a couple hundred times, is that sometimes when something is still wet, you get your hand in it. You ever do that? Like, oop, and then you track it down your paper or you put it on your canvas and eh, now you've got things that you need to fix, right? So by making sure that your paint is dry, it's going to really help things out. Well, how can we make our paint dry faster? Is there some sort of additive we can use, Spider? Uh, no, but you know what you can use? 
a hair dryer. Yeah, I use this all the time. I have a cheap hair dryer here in my studio, and uh, every so often I'm like, well, that's, that's not drying fast enough for my needs. And within a minute or two maximum, you've got a nice dry surface, and you're now ready for your next layer of paint. So that's a very important thing. It's a great tool to have, by the way. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, but, but it's good when I'm working on my paper here. So again, having a hair dryer is something that can help quickly dry your paint layers in between what you're doing can uh, save you from accidents and also just make the whole process a lot smoother. Okay, the fourth mistake that new painters often get into is not understanding the transparency realities of certain paint colors. So again, if I look down here, I have a block of uh, blue-green, It's a, but it's a darker color. It's a solid block. And let's say I want to be able to drop some different colors on it. I have a yellow here. It's a, it looks like a pretty good thick yellow. But if I come in to paint over the yellow, one of the things you're going to notice right away is that uh, it is very, very translucent. It is very translucent. And the challenge that you're going to run into is if what you're really hoping for is some opacity here and to really cover up that, that blob underneath it, it's going to require a whole bunch, a whole bunch of different uh, layers being put on here. Now, by the way, let me, uh, that yellow is one of those uh, culprit colors, by the way, which we've talked about in this channel in the past. Uh, the other one is our friend here uh, who is red. And again, red seems like it should be a good color to cover anything. And it really is one of the poorest covering colors. Now, how do we make this happen? Well, again, I don't necessarily want to be dropping layer after layer after layer on my canvas to cover up those spots. So is there an easier way to do that? Well, there can be. And that is with the introduction of some, uh, some basic white. So white is very, very uh, fortified, if you will, with uh, ingredients like titanium dioxide, which is a, a naturally occurring mineral when it oxidizes. It creates this white, uh, this white powder, this white, white, white powder. And the thing about working with that, let me just get a little bit on my palette, is that it's really a mineral base, and that's not the reason as much as other things, but it'll op it gives us an opportunity to have deep opacity. So weirdly, if we're working with white as a color, it does a much better job of covering up dark things. Now you can still see a little translucency through here because trying to cover up a very dark color with a very light color is never easy. But white will actually do a much better job. And if we combine our white, let me uh, get some yellow and white over here, then it allows me an opportunity, if I'm uh, again working and trying to find a way to make things a little bit more opaque, is that it will cover things up. Now one of the things that white will also do to any paint color you put it into is it will tint it. It's going to make this yellow a little bit lighter, perhaps, than I may have wanted. It's still going to require a few different layers in here, but you're going to get there much quickly. So look at just the fact that with a little bit of white in here, the, uh, the yellow is doing a much better job obscuring than the original thing we did. And why the heck, let's, uh, let's try to test the same thing out with the red. Let me get some red over here. And let's get some white into that. And again, it's a lot pinker for what we're doing. But again, if I come in here and put this over my dark color, once again, I want you to notice that it obscures it very, almost, almost perfectly. It's almost totally obscured compared to this, which almost looks like we just put a piece of red cellophane over it. It really just is a see-through. Uh, that's not really helping us. So again, there are ways that we can get around this. And part of it, of course, you might have to consider uh, tinting your colors a little bit differently using white as a background, but that's one of the easiest ways to make sure that your paint color is a little bit more opaque than you might have planned. All right? And the fifth mistake that a lot of beginner painters can make is that they're trying to work with an unprimed or unseasoned canvas. Now I have some canvas here. This is just some sta standard canvas off of a roll and it is not primed at all. So we prime using a product we call Gesso and gesso comes usually in big buckets because there's a lot of uh, different, you know, a lot of canvas we need to cover. And basically, what gesso allows us to do is to prep the canvas surface so that paint will better stick to it. And when you buy a, a standard panel type of uh, of canvas, right? It comes pre-gessoed usually in most cases. You can see on the back, it, it's it's less so, but it's basically a it's a something that helps the paint stick to the canvas and not leak through. And of course, this can make a big difference if we're coming in here. Let me just grab a quick paintbrush and 
see what the results are. And if I were to work on here on this piece of standard canvas without any type of primer or prepper on it, what's going to end up happening is the effect is going to be very different. If I let this paint sit here for a little bit, and again, I'm just going to get a little bit of the wetter paint, it's actually soaking into the surface of the canvas. Now, it could, it could result in some very interesting effects, and there have been abstract artists in the past who have really utilized untreated canvas to their benefit in this way. If that's the look and feel that you want, then absolutely. But in a lot of cases, it's also leaking through. You might not be able to see, but it's coming through the back of here, and it's ending up on my, uh, on my craft table, which, you know, oh, not my objective overall. So working with a gessoed surface, let me just show you quickly what is involved in this. Get this guy open. So I'm just picking up a little bit of the gesso here. And again, I don't need an awful lot. It's basically think of it almost like uh, paint glue. But if I come over here, the objective is to have the gesso soak into the canvas. We want it to really kind of fill up all those uh, nooks and crannies. And what it allows us to do, of course, is to create something that is now ready for painting. And this takes just a few moments to dry, and you can also hit it with a hair dryer if you want to speed it along. But the point simply is that now when I go to paint in that section, it's not going to soak into the canvas. It's going to allow my colors to stay closer to the surface and, frankly, give me more control. And, you know, think about like anything else. If I needed to go in and, uh, and paint something on a, a, a terry cloth bathrobe, it's going to be tough going because you have all those, those bumps, right? Same thing happens with your canvas. It's really hard sometimes to paint on straight canvas because it is painting on a piece of textile and it doesn't necessarily give you the smoothness that you might want. So in this scenario, a little bit of gesso can help out. Now, as I mentioned, you may also have a pre-gessoed piece of canvas like this one here. And I have talked to different artists who, uh, who swear by coming in and gessoing their gessoed canvas. And it just helps provide an additional layer of smoothness and protection. Again, what we're trying to do is make our tasks easier. And if I come in here, especially if I have like stains, because I don't know, I don't know what, what this came in contact with, but I can cover things up. But this also means that when I come in here later and I am working with uh, putting some paint on it, it's going to be a smoother, smoother process because I'm smoothing out this surface and making it a lot easier. So again, it's not quite the same as painting straight onto a piece of textile, which is, you know, oh, that's what campus is, right? It, it, is, it is textile. So we're going to make that just a lot easier. Now, some people also say the cool thing about working with gesso is if you want to lay down some sort of a foundational background color, and you may, you may want to put some sort of tint that is really at the base of your entire artwork, you could come in here, let me grab a little bit of that red, and I now have this wet surface, and it makes it very easy for me to blend that red in to make that kind of a uniform pink that is the foundation for what my background here is. Again, your color. Your color choices may vary, but you can come in here and have it as almost as a starting point. We can talk about this in the future, but one of the arguments, especially for people who are painting things like landscapes, is that it's really hard when you're looking at a white surface. It's kind of like snow blindness. You really can't see the contrast of other colors. And if you put a foundational background color of some sort, it just helps our eyes to be able to better see how it works. But anyway, that, that in essence is what we can do. And having some gesso already to work with just makes it real easy to smooth that all in and make it all part of our foundational background. And as a bonus tip, one last thing to share with you, a mistake that a lot of beginner painters make, and that is not experimenting. What I'm saying is don't play it safe. You know what? Take that canvas. Maybe you've already done something and you're not really happy with how it's turned out. Then turn it into something else. Go and say, let me take this paintbrush, let me put a big black mark down the middle, right? All right, it's already destroyed. Now, problem solved. Now I can work on it and turn it into something else. Play around. Experiment. The simple reality is if you always stay in a safe place, right, never making mistakes, you're never going to grow as a creative. And of course, that's part of why we're here. We want to be able to develop a sense of being able to create things that make us happy and we can share with other people. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're going to. You're going to make mistakes. I, I would say that one out of every four pieces I create does not get past <laughs> the garbage can. It's just like, you know what? It was a great experiment. I learned an awful lot of the way and you will as well. So go out, take some chances. Don't get daunted by that blank sheet of paper or that blank canvas in front of you. Go put something down, and as a result, you'll have a place to start. And if it doesn't work out, 
Yeah, yeah, you learn something along the way. Anyway, that's all I have to share with you this time. By the way, if you like what we're doing here, we drop a video every Friday morning and would love to share more tips and tricks regarding mixed media, art, and uh, creation with you. Please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Anyway, that's all I have for you this week. I'll talk to you real soon.